Reinforcement steel, spacing, clearances, bar bends, and splices. In this section, we will discuss rebar placement, generally located in the tension zones, rebar bends and hooks, spacing and clearances, splices, and development lengths. As mentioned in the previous slide, rebars are to be located in the tension zone. Two examples of how tension zones may be located are provided in this and the following slides. The first example is a cantilever retaining wall with load pushing against it from the right side as shown on this slide. The cantilever wall will deflect as shown on this exaggerated sketch. Observe the right side of the wall is longer than the left side if the wall is to bend in this fashion. The right side is therefore the tension zone and the rebar is located on the right side. The second example is a brace retaining wall with the suspended deck bracing the top of the wall. It should be noted that backfill should not occur until the suspended slab reach its required strength. This information should be shown on the approved drawing. The wall is loaded on the right side as shown. The brace retaining wall will deflect as shown on this exaggerated sketch. Now the left side is longer than the right side. The left side is now the tension zone, hence the reinforcing is placed on the left side of the wall. You may think of the tension zone as a smile with a lower lip longer than the upper lip when you smile, the rebar must be placed on the lower lip or the lower side. However, if you wear an upside down smile, then the upper lip is longer than the lower lip and the rebar will need to be placed on the upper lip or the longer side. The typical standard hook extensions at the free ends of bar is illustrated on this slide. Know the extension is a function of the degree of the bend. The stirrup and tie hook extensions at the free ends of bar is shown on this slide. Know the differences between the different hooks, standard versus stirrup and tie hooks. This slide illustrates the importance of accurately placing rebars as well as securing rebars prior to pour. The precast panels appear to have the required two number six bars at the roof as discussed in the general requirements portion of this concrete presentation. Unfortunately, the bar on the left panel is either placed incorrectly or dislodged during concrete placement operation. This is a closer look at the panel connection perhaps at a different location. The splice appear to be insufficient to develop the bar. The project inspector needs to make sure the bars are securely placed. The CWI needs to make sure the welds are placed per the approved drawings. And finally, the project inspector needs to double check the CWI. It is important to maintain spacing and or clearances per the approved drawings, since splice and development lengths will need to be increased to account for closely spaced parallel bars and for tight edge distances. There appear to be a depression in the center of the photo with bars very close to the form. How to properly support the bars will need to be addressed. Chairs may not be available for this minimal amount of cover. Also, the thin cover may impact both structural integrity and fire rating of the slab. To provide proper concrete cover, rebars must be supported with the correct size and orientation of Dolby. This slide shows incorrect Dolby utilization. It appears that leveling nuts are installed below the base plate. There is no reason to use Dolby other than to save grout. Dolby is not an acceptable substitute for grout and must be removed prior to grouting. 
This is a typical detail for bar splice in column or drag element. The requirement for stagger splice location will be discussed in the following slide. Factors affecting reinforcing development lengths are top bars, coatings, bar size, lightweight concrete, and concrete cover. Lap splices per ACI 318 14, section 25.5. Increase for closely spaced parallel bars. Increase for tight edge distance. Increase lap length by 1.3. For top bar, where more than 12 inches of concrete is cast below the bar. Increase for lightweight aggregate. Also, larger bars will require longer lap slices and development lengths. CBC section 1901A.5, item 7. The construction document shall include the type and locations of mechanical and welded splices of reinforcement. ACI 318 14, section 25.5.7.1. The mechanical and welded splices shall develop 125% of yield strength of bar in tension and compression. ACI 318 14, section 25.5.7.4 25 requires splices in adjacent bars shall be staggered at least 30 inches in tension time member. Project inspectors to note the following. Evaluation reports of mechanical couplers require measuring cover from the outer surface of couplers. Most mechanical couplers will not work with coated bars. Project inspectors also need to compare the couplers with those shown on the evaluation reports. Custom fabricated couplers not shown on the evaluation reports are not acceptable. CBC Section 1903A.8 Modified ACI 318-14 Section 26.6.4.1b Welding of Reinforcing Bars This section was covered before in the What's New section of this concrete presentation. Section 1903A.8 is for fusion welding of reinforcing bars. If you recall, longitudinal holding wires are required. Ties to be welded to the holding wires must be ASTM A706. And welding of ties to main reinforcing is prohibited. ACI 318-14, Section 26.6.3.1b. Field bending or reinforcement partially embedded in concrete or dowels is not permitted unless it's shown on DSA approved drawings or approved by the structural engineer or record. Please verify with your DSA field engineer if a CCD is required. These dowels appeared to be driven over and bent multiple times and likely will require replacement, perhaps using epoxy dowels and to be approved by a CCD.